slightly mutilate myself and splash the blood on the portrait of George Washington. <laughs> Someone bring my bow and arrow. was an Indian maid who said she couldn't be laid. She lay on her back in a one-room shack and let a cowboy stick it in a crack. <laughs> Perhaps that was inappropriate. <laughs> Onward, Christian soldiers, <laughs> marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Another cheap shot. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not all American Indian killers were Christian. <clears throat> Here is a real English song. I saw her as she came and went. I saw her queenly, meek and mild. As an innocent, as an flower among her flowers, among her flowers content. I come again and in her place, for silence and a vacant room. And in my heart a sudden I no more shall see, no more shall see her face. There was a word I might have said, but what it was I hardly know. I let the days fly by and more. Now I must say it, I'll say it to the dead. I'm sorry, Dad. That other stuff was just show business. <coughs> you tell Jesse and the gang that I meant no harm? <laughs> Those who cannot repeat history are condemned to remember. <laughs> realize 
that great writers have also had an influence among the settlers. I would like now to read to you a brief excerpt from the autobiography of Crazy Horse, the famous leader of the Sioux Indians. From chapter 39 of the autobiography of Crazy Horse, called simply Crazy for Life. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, my father worked quite hard and was good at what he did. <laughs> Nevertheless, we were very poor and the family was large. We did not feel poor because my parents stressed always the importance of gratitude to the good Lord for everything. I cannot say when I began working, for all of us children had our chores starting at an early age according to our abilities. Discipline was strict and swiftly administered. Woe betide the child who shirked his duties. But I remember well my first job at which I made real money to contribute to the family coffers. How proud I was. It was, of course, only an after-school job. Yet every day at three o'clock, I would race to the shop. The boss was a stern but kindly old man from whom I learned a great deal, including how to endure the teasing I often got from the experienced workers. In those crucial formative years, I learned from my parents and from our community certain values which have served me well over the years. These values are seldom seen today, yet would we not all be better off if we held to them? promoted them to the young, who today seem so restless and lost. <clears throat> Among those values, surely the most important is faith and trust in the good Lord and his plan for each and every one of us. Often, when times seem difficult beyond our endurance, we are tempted to imagine that God cares not. It is specifically at those times when it is most important to learn to accept those things which we cannot change. Second, the concept of hard work individual responsibility. When I was growing up, none of us would have dreamed of relying on government handouts. Success comes only from hard work. And as my father often said, God helps those who help themselves. My father also said, never judge a man until you have walked a mile in his mother's <laughs> Is that not an ingredient of true patriotism? 
It is so easy to complain about what our elected leaders are doing. What would each of us do in their place with their responsibilities? What is it that has made this country great and the envy and hope of peoples the world over? It is that freedom which allows every man, no matter how humble his origins, to achieve what he will and what he is willing to work for. My father started with nothing. As a young man, he brought his new bride from the old country, now called Siberia. <laughs> In those days, there was a toll-free land bridge across the Bering Strait. <laughs> Still, the going was often rough. <laughs> the stories of those times are full of humor and pain. It is because of that that the misunderstanding between my father and I is still so grievous to me. <laughs> it occurred when I announced my intention to take up a life in the arts. <laughs> Dad wanted me to go into real estate because there was such a great and open challenge about the country in those days. But also, of course, he had no real grasp of what art was. He would say, we have no art. We do all things well. <laughs> he particularly detested those artists whom I, as an inexperienced young man, most admired. Catlin, Rousseau, <laughs> and especially Gauguin. <laughs> Naturally, his main concern was whether or not I would be able to properly sustain myself as an artist. For that, I had no reply. Sadly, he passed away before I had achieved any real accomplishments in my chosen field. <laughs>